flying it's like uh, car driving on ice you have to expect something and then you have to try and then you have to react but it's never 100 percent sure sure yeah My name is Christian. Since 2012, I'm a professional paragliding pilot. I grew up here in Adelboden, and my nickname is Rigel. The, the nickname, <laughs> it's a funny story. And in 2003, I flew a new record from Niesen, and I crossed it into the Wallis until Austria, 323 kilometers. And there was a journalist, he uh, wrote an article, and he said, okay, uh, Kriegel comes from Adelboden and he flies as good as an eagle. And after I put it on my website and now it's, it's uh, my nickname. First time I saw a paraglider I was four. And I remember I really was fascinated by the birds because they flew away and they was completely free. And I, I also wanted this feeling to be free. And my first flight I did when I was seven with a tandem and I realized directly that this, uh, it's what I will do. But in Switzerland you have to be 16 years old to do the license and so it was a long way to wait until this, uh, this time I could do the, the license. I also came in contact with the world's best pilots. Immediately in Switzerland, uh, there are several of them, and it makes fun to to learn these uh, tricks and to learn about the weather, about the landscape, and uh, finally it was also a motivation to go to the PWC, to the Paragliding World Cup, overseas. So I remember I was 18 when I uh, was uh, able to compete in Mexico. In 2007, with the success of the uh, World Cup, I came in contact with LOVA. And I was very lucky that LOVA, Switzerland, they also import x -Bionic when they was very new in 2008. And I was very happy that they offered me the, the whole clothing. My personal problem is that I really sweat a lot. So immediately I'm completely wet in the back, everywhere. In, in the hiking part it's normal, but it with the X-Bionic it feels more uh, comfortable even when it's wet especially with the backpack especially when it's windy and when I come higher and when it starts to be more cold even with the wet I feel that I can bring more power because I'm still warm my day normally it's um, working in the office for planning for dealing for organization etc and then if the weather is very good, I try to do the training during the day in combination with flying. So I have a training walking up. I do different uh, training. I do running, so jogging um, to be fast on the road. But the most I do hike and fly. So it's like here, hiking up and fly down. And yeah, it's, uh, I, I try to have a mix. Also a bit mountain biking. In the winter I do ski touring and mountaineering so to have a different uh, load on my body because only running with my back it's uh, quite hard it means uh, the recovery needs time and so i try to find a, a good mix during one week to do different disciplines to have a good feeling good load and then in the afternoon i i do several things like uh, fitness training or stretching and or in the office working with my material. 
The cloth from X Bionic are so resistant, they are not damaged after 10 years. I hear from other guys uh, other, other stuff and immediately it was damaged, but the X Bionic or also the X uh, it works the best. In hike and fly, you have to be sportive in body fitness. And in just in flying, you have to be fit in the, in the head. In the flight, I have to be dry. With the X-Bionic, in the lower part, maybe I also sweat a bit. And this is not a problem because it dries until I'm high, and then uh, I'm dry in the high, in the cold air. So and with X-Bionic, for me, this gives me a perfect feeling, even it's sweating or when, uh, when it's raining also. When I prepare my glider and when I took off, uh, I start to come in a different world. There are normally two important things. One is my glider. It's uh, three and a half kilo. It's 23 square meter big and it gives me the possibility to fly. And the second important is my harness where I lean in. It's a construction with straps, with lines, with cloth that I'm comfortable for more than 10 hours without pain. For sure there is another important part, it's the rescue. If this glider not fly anymore or if I have a crash, I can open this rescue. I bring my helmet, my jacket um, for navigation. I have an instrument, information about climbing or the speed I have, about uh, air spaces where I'm not allowed to fly. And I bring a backup because this is a GPS Sometimes it needs a backup because it's not working. So I have everything I need with me. To fly in the Alps, it's the most challenging. And uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice part. I also like to fly on the, on the sea, on the coast, because the wind there is very laminar and it's no stress at all. Here, for example, it's all about uh, moving air, turmaling. If you learn to fly in the flats, it's like uh, a bodybuilder going to the gym with less weight. And if you fly in the Alps, it's like going to the gym with the high weight. Yeah, my, my big motivation is to to spread my experience. I work with, uh, with young pilots in the Swiss League or I built this X Alps Academy to, to help young pilots for, uh, for competitions. The reason that I do competition on the beginning was that I come even better. So I need a challenge and need the, the other athletes, the concurrents, to see how fast they can go. And once I won, I was really happy because I won. But I know that I did many mistakes. Every competition is a new challenge, so it's not after winning once, it's clear that I will win again. I really have to fight again. And I like this, this challenge because paragliding sport is not really a fight. It's more about the tactic decision taking. Sometimes I, I think it's, like, it's a bit like playing chess because you always have to think in front different uh, moves and then you, you have to try. And in paragliding sport, I try to do a good plan, but we have to work, work with the weather. So we improvise every time. What's the next decision? Uh, what I have options? What is the next tactic uh, point which is very important? And then you, you have an idea and you start flying this idea and after some minutes you start to reactive a new idea. So it's always uh, about thinking the next steps. It uh, depends on the competition. So in a, in a normal flying competition, it's more about tactic game like in a cycling race, going with the others and in the last 20% of the race you attack and then it's working or not. In a hike and fly competition, the most of the athletes, they start too fast for a 10-day race. 
And for me, it was very important uh, to start the race slow. It feels like starting 80% just. And then on the day two or three, I can push to 100%. When I started paragliding competition in uh, 2000, the Swiss nationality was uh, really on the top. They won almost everything. There was a, a big community in Switzerland. And then France starts to support the paragliding sports. And in France, there are many athletes, they, they are very good. Italy, Germany, Austria, it's pushing uh, a lot. Paragliding is all around the world, but I think 50% of the market is in Europe. I would say 90% of them, they are family uh, friends. Every competition, several people, they really want to fight. On the end, they, they come back and then you can talk again. So it's a, it's a typical competition situation. Paragliding competition, uh, it's my passion and as long as I feel good, if, if uh, my body works well, I like to do these competitions. Yeah, I really like this life. <laughs>